we'll go ahead and start off at the obvious starting point, which is the letter A. And you can see that I've listed the command for not just the letter A, but also Shift A or capital A. And that gives you frame all views. And I've tried to do that throughout, but also give you some related commands or any extra information that I think might be associated or useful for that particular hotkey, in this case, camera history. So let's take a look at what this looks like in Maya. So here's my scene. And if I want to quickly view whatever's in the scene or all the geometry, I can hit the A key. And you get what you might expect, just a look at all of the geometry at that particular camera angle that you have in the scene. And so that's pretty straightforward. If I happen to be in a two up view and I want to sync everything in the scene, I can hit Shift A. And you can see now that both views are focused on all of the items that I have in my scene. The only time this might get a little confusing is if you have something like an image based light in the scene. And in this case, I'm going to create an image based light that is really large. And if I hit the A key in that particular situation, you can see everything in my scene disappears. And that's because I have this really large basically sphere encompassing my scene and Maya is trying to view everything in the scene and it puts the camera way out in space. So there's a couple of ways that you can get back. You can either hit the left bracket key and that will return you to the previous view or you can go to the view menu and you can see that I have my previous and next views here with the bracket keys and I can just go back to the default view. So that's always kind of a safety net to get you back to your origin if your camera gets kind of placed in a place that you're not really sure what happened. So it always kind of sort of brings it back to its origin. So that's the A hotkey. Moving on to the letter B. B is a really useful hotkey because Maya uses a brush in so many different areas of the application. You can use a brush for sculpting and selecting things as well as, of course, painting. And B will modify the size of that radius. So let's take a look at how that works. If we jump into our scene again uh, and select our ocean geometry here, uh, I can shift right mouse button click on the surface and get access to my sculpt geometry tool and its settings. Now in this case, uh, you can see I get a red cursor that represents my brush and the radius of the brush. If I hold the B hot key down, I can go left and right and change the size or the effect that I'm going to have when I start dragging across the surface. Now I'm using a pressure sensitive Wacom tablet and you can see that my brush uh, or my stroke equals the size of my brush. If I change that to a smaller size, you can see I get a smaller stroke. Now, one thing that might be useful is to use pressure sensitivity with this, which uh, does work. But one thing to keep in mind is that you need to change the pressure mapping to be radius or both. And this will change the size of the brush based on the pressure. So uh, a light stroke gives me this small, uh, small indentation. If I undo that and press harder, I get this broader deformation of the surface. And that is uh, potentially, potentially what I want. The shift B uh, held down will change that lower radius size. So in this case, no matter how light my pressure, my radius will never go lower than that lower size. And the shift B hotkey dragging left and right changes that value. You can see that the, the numeric, uh, the number changes in the interface as well. The last thing I wanted to mention is the B hotkey will also turn on and off soft select. So if I select a vertice here, you can see that I get my soft select indication. If I hit the B key once, it turns that off. If I hit it again, it turns it back on. If I hold it down while the soft select is active, you can see I can change the radius. So that's, again, another place that uh, is really useful to have the B hotkey hanging around. C is really super simple. Uh, it just snaps an object to a curve. Uh, one extra little bit to note is that it also works on edges. So I'm going to select my object, hold the C key down. You can see that my snapping button is indicated uh, as active on the status line. All I have to do is middle mouse button near a curve and my object now snaps to that. I'm just dragging it back and forth along the curve. Uh, as I mentioned, if we go into wireframe on shaded, we can look at the edges that are associated with this particular scene. I can move this object off my curve, hold the C key down and middle mouse button snap to any edge in my scene. So those are two really handy ways of using the C hotkey.